Hello and namaste. My name is Brandon Foltz, and I teach statistics and other mathy things here on YouTube. If you like this video, please subscribe and ring that bell for more. In this problem walkthrough video, we will review linear equations to prepare you for linear regression. Now, I know your time is valuable, so let's go ahead and get to it. Is the following an example of a linear equation? y equals negative 0.125 minus 3.5x. If all you came here for is the answer to this question, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to you. The answer is yes, this is a linear equation. Now I assume you are here to learn more than just the answer and refresh your memory on linear equations from your algebra class, whether you had algebra four years ago or 40 years ago. So let's go ahead and dive into this deeper, learn more about linear equations that will set us up to learn more advanced topics in linear regression. So at some point in your algebra journey, you learned about something called the slope intercept form of a line. And it is y equals mx plus b. Now, of course, in this slope intercept form, there is a slope and an intercept. That's how it gets its name. So in this case, m is the slope and B is the Y intercept, just like that. Now, if you look, this looks somewhat similar to our equation up here in the triad example, but it seems to be in a slightly different order. Now, because this is addition, we can simply rearrange these terms. So I'm gonna do my little rearrange symbol here, and we can rewrite this as Y equals B plus MX. So when we write it like that, it's in the same form as we have up here on our example. B is still the y-intercept and M is still the slope. Now we can classify the slope in one of three ways. The slope can be either negative, the slope can be zero, or the slope could be positive. And depending on the sign of the slope, or if it's zero, it has a certain form on the graph. So for example, let me make some room here. I'm gonna make three basic graphs. So here, here, and here. Now if the slope is negative, it will generally have a pattern like this. Starts in the upper left and goes down to the lower right. So that's a negative slope. Now if the slope is zero, it will be a horizontal line across the graph. So that's sort of a zero slope. And then the positive slope will be the opposite of the negative. It'll be something like that. Now your graphs won't look exactly like this, but the general pattern always holds. A line with a negative slope will go from upper left to lower right. A line with a zero slope is actually a horizontal line. And then a line with a positive slope goes from lower left to upper right. So those are our general patterns. Now the easiest way to go about graphing a line is to find the two intercept. We have a Y intercept and an X intercept. Now the students I teach, I tell them to think in terms of opposites. The Y intercept is actually a point on the graph and the Y intercept is where X is zero in that point. So it will look something like this, zero and then something. And then for the x-intercept, it's the exact opposite. That's where y is zero. So this will be something zero. And those will be our two intercepts. Now why doing it this way is so easy is that we are already given one of the values of our two variables, x and y. So for example, in the y-intercept case, x is already zero. So if I rewrite our equation, y equals negative 0 0.125 minus 3.5x. Well, in the y-intercept, I know x is zero, so I can substitute zero in for x. So I have y equals negative 0 0.125 minus 3.5 times zero. Now, of course, 3.5 times zero is zero, so that actually zeroes out. So y is negative 0 0.125. And that is actually the point in our intercept. So our y-intercept is zero, negative 0 
See how that works? Now the x-intercept works the exact same way. We know in this case that the zero goes where y is over here. So now we have zero equals negative 0 0.125 minus 3.5x. Now in this case, we gotta solve for x. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of the negative 0 0.125 over here on the right by adding positive 0 0.125 to both sides. We have to do it to both sides. So plus 0 0.125 on this side and plus 0 0.125 on the left side. So of course through addition, those go to zero, they're on the right. So now we have 0 0.125 equals negative 3.5x. Now we divide both sides by negative 3.5. So we can get our x isolated by itself, negative 3.5. So through division, this is one, so we're left with just x. So when we do this division on our calculator or whatever else we're using, we find that this is approximately negative 0.04. We're just kind of rounding for the sake of this video. So our x-intercept is negative 0.04, 0. We have our y-intercept and our x-intercept by putting 0 in for the other variable that we're looking at. So next, let's go ahead and look at an actual graph of this line. So here we have our equation again. We have our y-intercept and our x-intercept. So remember the y-intercept is where our line intersects the y-axis. So the y-axis is our vertical axis. So at negative 0 0.125, that is approximately right here. So if we look at this graph here, each square is 0.1. So 0.1 would take us down to here. And then this would be 0 0.2, of course, because you can see that labeled. 2.5 is about a quarter of the way, which would be about right here. So that's where that intercept is. So this is our y-intercept. Now the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. So in this case, it's at negative 0.04. So we know that this point here, approximately on that line, is negative 0.1. So 0.04 is a little bit less than half of that distance. That point right there, that is our x-intercept right there. So that makes sense. Now also, if we look at our slope, we see that it's negative. So the general form of this line is from upper left to lower right. If you were to graph this line and you had the slope going the other direction from lower left to upper right, yet the sign of the slope was negative, you would know somewhere that you did something wrong. So you can use the slope sign as a check on your graph to make sure you have graphed it correctly. So in this case, the slope here is negative 3.5. So what does that actually mean? Well, what that tells us is that the rise versus the run of this line is negative 3.5. So remember the slope, m, is rise over run. So in this case, it is negative 3.5 divided by one, because the one there is implied. So the rise is negative 3.5 units, which means we go down. So let's pick a point here. Um, this is kind of a small graph, but I'll pick one anyway. So let's pick a point right here on the line. Now let's go down 3.5 squares. So one, two, three, and then a half would be about right there. Now we go over one square. So we go from the middle of this square to approximately the middle of this square and it takes us to right there. So as we can see, this right here is our slope. So this is negative 3.5, we go down and over one. And that's our rise over run, in this case it's negative. I hope this is a good sort of reintroduction or refreshing your memory of linear equations, how we interpret the slope, how we find the x-intercept and the y-intercept because later, as you're using Microsoft Excel or whatever else you're using to do your regression problems, they're going to provide you a linear equation. And it's very important to be able to interpret what that linear equation means because you will be using it for all kinds of things in regression. You will use it to analyze the variables in the equation. You will use it to determine which variables are significant. You will use it to generate predicted values in the equation and on and on. So it's very important to have a good fundamental understanding of linear equations. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Before you go, 
please check out some of the other content I have here on my channel. That being said, I appreciate you spending some of your valuable time with me. I wish you all the best in your work and in your studies, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.